The President, please be seated. Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. L'audience est ouverte. During today's sessions and through the end of this week, uh, the chamber is scheduled to hear PCW five Mr. Sakalvoti is now instructed to report on the Nous current status of the parties to the proceedings today. Mr. Sakolvati, good morning, Mr. La President Lévi. and your honors. Bonjour, All the parties to the proceedings are present, except Mr. Nunchi, who is present in his holding cell lui, lui due to his health concerns. Witness who is to testify today, TCW536, is present in the Et waiting room. Present dans la salle awaits call from the chamber. According to the witness, the witness is not Le in a relationship with the co-accused persons, Mr. Kiosampon and Nguyen or any parties or civil parties uh, to the proceedings. The witness will take the oath before the chamber in a moment, and the witness has no duty counsel. Et le témoin n'a pas demandé à obtenir les services d'un conseil. The president, thank you. The chamber has received Merci. a medical report from the treating physicians who La a reçu advise un the chamber that uh, Mr. Nunchi be allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell due to his health reason. As Mr. Nunchi is, is in need of a medical physician in his assistance and uh, the chamber insists of such a recommendation, and such recommendation is uh, relevant to the experts' testimonies during the trial proceedings. And according to the internal rule, due to Mr. Nunez's health concerns, he is fit to stand trial and for uh, in the interest of, of justice, um, Mr. Nunchi is now allowed to observe the proceedings from his holding cell to video audio de depuis, uh, Every post officers are now instructed to ensure that uh, the audio visual link is now fed to his uh, holding cell so that he can observe the proceedings from there. Court officer is now directed to bring in the next witness. Huissier d'audience, veuillez faire entrer le témoin.
The President, uh, very good morning, Mr. Witness. Bonjour, Monsieur le Témoin. Le témoin parle son micro. Good morning, Mr. President, and good morning to bonjour. all Cambodian people. Monsieur le Président, Look, uh, et bonjour I, uh, au peuple cambodien. The President, dit le témoin. Mr. Witness, le can you please tell the chamber your full name? Pouvez-vous nous dire votre nom? Réponse. Je m'appelle. My name is François Poncho. François Poncho. En Khmer, Pont Chou. Spien Kedar. The President, Mr. François Poncho. Le Président. When were you born? I I was born in February 1939 in the uh, the area of the Alp Mountain. The President, uh, thank you, Mr. François Poncho. And uh, where do you live now? I live on street number 57, rather house number 57, street 101, Bang Bank. The President, what do you do for a living? Question. Quelle est votre profession? Réponse. Response. I am a priest. Je suis curé. Non, prêtre. Prêtre. Question. What are your parents' names? Question. Comment s'appellent vos parents? Réponse. Réponse. My father is Léon Poncho. Mon père s'appelle Léon Poncho. He was born in 19... Uh, no, eight, uh, 1989. He... Died uh, 20 years ago, and my mother is Edith Shaku, and she Et died 15 years ago. Et ma mère Elle est the president, thank you, Mr. François Poncho. As a witness uh, before this en chamber, temps, you are chambre, vous supposed to take uh, the oath uh, according to religion. Do you agree? Yes, I can. Mr. François Poncho, I would like to declare solemnly that I now will talk the truth, nothing but the whole truth. The President, thank you. Mr. Poncho, according to the report by the greffier of the trial chamber, and to the best of your knowledge, you are not in a relationship with any individuals or civil parties who Avec have uh, been admitted as uh, the civil dossier. parties before the chamber and uh, you are not in any relationship with the two co-accused. Is it true? Est -ce le cas? Response, Réponse. yes it is. En effet. The President, according to the same le report, président by the greffier you la are not in any relationship with any of the parties to the proceedings is that true Vous aucun lien avec aucune des response I am not Réponse. in any relationship with either Nguyen Chi or Kilsen Pond, although I met uh, one of them uh, Mr. Kilsen Pond eight years ago Que s'en pend il y a huit ans. Mon nom. The president, uh, before we proceed to put some questions for you, the chamber wishes to inform uh -huh. you of your rights. As the witness, Mr. François Poncho, as the witness during these proceedings before the trial chamber, François Poncho, à titre de témoin, comparaissant devant cette chambre, you can 
choose not to respond to any questions that are th that in your response uh, you feel that uh, they will be self-incriminating and as the witness you are to respond to all questions put for you Mais by the vous devez judges of the trial chamber or parties to parties vous the proceeding and you are to speak the truth, vous devez dire la the whole truth, nothing Toute but the truth. Vérité, and this truth uh, must be relevant to the experiences you have had, relevant to the events, and also relevant to the questions put to you by the judges and the parties to the proceedings. Vos réponses doivent être pertinentes. The next question is, uh, Mr. François Ponchot, have you ever given any interviews uh, to any of the co-investigating judges uh, of the ECC during the last few years? Response, uh, Mr. Marcel Lemont called uh, me uh, to uh, speak with me for the whole day. It was four years ago. And eu un entretien avec le juge Marcel Le Monde, qui a duré une, I already une reported il y a ans. To, to, uh, the Human Rights Committee or Je UN uh, Human Rights Committee in Genève uh, on the 15th of, of, of September. Le 1998 about the Khmer Rouge regime or democratic The president, uh, thank you, Mr. Pancho. We have already uh, noted that you are now speaking in Khmer, but what is your nationality, please? Response, I am French originally. However, I work here Mais to develop the à province. Pré -Vihir pour at Prévihir, they said that Et I was on a, dit a, a, a French uh, individual who, uh, or rather a Khmer who uh, was born French, Khmer, né en France. who helped to um, uh, claim Prévihir for Cambodia. Et qui a aidé the President, uh, Mr. Poncho, it is really impressive indeed that you speak Khmer during the trial proceedings. Nonetheless, it would also be great if you can also uh, speak uh, French. And, uh, but uh, the Chamber would not really uh, discriminate again uh, the, the way you choose uh, your uh, language to speak. If you I uh, choose to speak Khmer, then si you will be Khmer, supposed to speak Khmer all uh, throughout uh, the en, whole proceedings for the convenience of interpreting pour, uh, uh, purposes. But if you choose to uh, speak French, then you may si do so and française, just speak one language so that uh, it is uh, uh, easy for us to understand, uh, and it, indeed it's for the purpose of uh, justice here before this chamber. Dans de la the President, could you please hold on, ah, Mr. Pancho? Uh, please speak uh, when you see the red uh, light is on your mic. Otherwise, uh, your message uh, cannot be conveyed. Sinon, nous ne pourrons pas entendre ce que vous dites. Mr. Pancho. In Cambodia, we are now trying, uh, we are prosecuting the accused who, uh, who have committed the crimes. And uh, as uh, it is in Cambodia, we should speak Khmer. I have been, now I have a Khmer citizenship. Uh, en Khmer, and la uh, I can speak Khmer without any problem. problem. The president, uh, the indeed, president. Uh, your Khmer is very fluent effet, and clear. The chamber would not Et object uh, to uh, your choice uh, of language, and you can indeed speak Khmer during these proceedings. But as uh, I already 
um, made it clear if you dit, choose to speak si my please speak my in the whole proceeding so that uh, the interpreters uh, could uh, follow you very smoothly and uh, very well the president uh, next uh, the chamber would like to inform the parties to the Une proceedings that uh, during the testimony of Mr. François Poncho, the chamber mm -hmm. would like François to proceed uh, with putting chambre. a few questions yeah. uh, to the witness before handing over the floor to the prosecutors enfin, and the co-lawyers for the civil parties and finally uh, the defense counsels for Puis les Mr. Nguyen and kill some pawn. Mr. François Poncho. Can you tell the chamber, please, uh, how long have you been working and living in Cambodia? Response, I came to Cambodia in, on, on the 4th of um, November 1965 during the Sihanouk uh, regime and also I lived uh, through Lonol's regime and for another piece of information I I offered uh, the key to the U.S. Embassy to a person on the 7th of May, and I was American taken American to the border area by the 7th of May, 1975. So altogether, I had uh, been in Cambodia for 47 years and a half. The President, thank you. Can you tell the chamber also what was your purpose of coming to Cambodia Mr. in 1965 and where did you work? Response. I arrived in Cambodia as a member of, the, of an association, the Christian Association, who or which uh, had to travel La Société des missions countries in Asia. This uh, committee came to Asia in 1959, and there was a small Christian community, uh, and they would like to have uh, young people to engage in this mission, and I was selected. And for the first three years, I studied uh, Khmer, and also the customs and traditions and Buddhism. And I lived uh, with Khmer people so that I could easily understand and Buddhism. And I studied how Buddhism could help Christians uh, on how we could also make use of uh, uh, the way we understand uh, Buddhism and the way we understand uh, Christianity. The President, thank you very much. You said uh, you came to Cambodia in 1965 and had to live uh, all the way to the 7th of May 1975 when you left and you were deported uh, by the liberated uh, soldiers. The next question is, during this period of time from 1965 to 1975, Donc, de 65 did you ever leave Cambodia on any occasion? For example, did you ever leave Cambodia for France or for a foreign country during this time? Response. I left uh, Cambodia on the 7th of May 1975. I was so worried at Et that time because I had to travel to France 
French government uh, offered uh, two airplanes uh, to evacuate uh, the French immigrants. Pour les At that time, français. my association, uh, I was assigned, uh, but I was asked uh, to uh, travel to another country, not enfin, France. Pays, pas la France. I would like to tell the world what happened in Cambodia. Je voulais dire au monde ce qui s'était passé au Cambodge, ce qui se produisait au Cambodge. But uh, I was then sent to France. Mais I uh, was in France in July 1975, en en where I started writing about what happened in Cambodia, uh, about when the Khmer Rouge soldiers entered uh, Phnom Penh. And my Rouges writing was Pompen. also published uh, On the 15th of October, it was Et about the revolution, the miserability, the, the miserableness of uh, the revolution. The president, Mr. Pongsho, could you please October, wait and, and listen to my question uh, precisely and just respond révolution. directly to Le the président. question Monsieur being Pongsho, asked. Uh, indeed, uh, you will be asked a lot of questions précises. by the parties to the proceedings. As the president, president of the trial chamber, I would like to chambre. only proceed with the very simple or common questions uh, concerning your living in Cambodia, in particular in Phnom Penh. Uh, we asked uh, you these questions uh, uh, concerning the period of time prior to 1975 to establish the fact uh, and to learn from you based on your experience uh, living in this country during this time. And the Khmer Rouge soldiers Votre came to Phnom Penh in 1975 on the 17th of April. Phnom we will ask you a few more 75, questions uh, concerning this chronological order of the events until the moment when you were deported from Cambodia and then you landed in Thailand, in Thailand uh, uh, through Pai Pat uh, checkpoint. Uh, these are the, the line of questions uh, to be Voici asked. Le type de qui vous seront posées. And uh, we believe that if you respond uh, more than what we ask, then uh, you would then answer uh, si the questions pas, that the party uh, might be asking already. Il est possible. Again, you said uh, you came to Cambodia in 1965, but then you left uh, on the 7th of May 1975. My question to you again, between 1965 and 1975, did you ever leave Com Cambodia on any occasion, Cambodian. for example, on a field mission or a trip to en France. Mission, Response, I left hey, Cambodia you... for one month in 1972. The president, thank you. Le président, merci. We would like uh, to know also what was Cambodia like during the time when you were à l'époque où vous y séjourniez from 1970 to 1975. In the country, because you had been living in Cambodia for a long period of time, although you had left uh, temporarily on one occasion in 1972, you said you left uh, Cambodia for about six months before you returned. Uh, so you had remained in Cambodia all the time already cela, during this period of time. So we would like to know what happened. Context, nous ne. Response from Réponse. 1965 to 1970, I had 
uh, been in Cambodia for about five years already and I was impressed by the development. I did not pay great interest uh, to the poverty or injustice in the society. Be I knew that there was some injustice, uh, people talked about this, but I did not uh, have great interest uh, in that because I was uh, rather young. I heard uh, about uh, uh, Prince uh, Norodom Sihanouk cursing Hu Nam and Hu Yun. And in that I also heard about the riots rebellions in some lots. And at that time, some like Sihanouk uh, would Sam like to Sihanouk arrest uh, Mr. Kyo Sampan, Hunam and Huyun. I also read uh, new articles aussi uh, that articles de uh, uh, about the, the death of uh, these people. So I learned uh, about personnes. this uh, before 1970. Tout but later on, I learned that uh, the three people suite, uh, escaped, uh, they were not killed, uh, as what claimed pas été by tué, the news. Prétendu la presse. In some load, I don't remember the exact uh, month, but it was in 1967, uh, the farmers en 67, uh, revolted moins, against uh, the Sihanouks. Uh, people because uh, their land uh, was grabbed parce que leur terre avait to été pay ways saisie. for the sugar factory pour uh, installer people started une this uh, sucrerie riot and that there was une not a donc éclaté. or the Khmer Rouge soldier did not exist yet à ce moment-là il n'y avait pas encore de soldats Khmer Rouge en 1968 about the Khmer Rouge j'ai entendu parler des Khmer Rouge soldiers and i also heard about the killing of the people in uh, who were killed uh, by the Khmer Rouge soldiers. Des gens qui Indeed, été tués uh, I heard Khmer that the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, killed uh, these people. Les Khmer Rouge tué des gens. Then I went to Krochma. Ensuite, je suis allé à Krochma. Further south of Krochma, of Krochas province, at night à I Krochez, would hear vers le sud de dog barking. And I asked La people nuit, why dog and, and they, they said that was normal. Actually, it was not normal because uh, the Khmer Rouge normal. had to come to the villages uh, during the uh, night time to propagandize uh, their course. Pour, uh, faire de la That's all I remember, and this event voilà uh, uh, remained the same until 1970. And when it comes to Kyo Sampan, I would like to admire him. His Excellency Kyo Sampan was Mr. Clean. À je and Son uh, Kyo Sampan, King Norodom Sihanouk promoted him to be the officer Le in charge Sihanouk of the Ministry of Commerce. Du commerce. He did not receive que Sampan n'acceptait pas les deux sous le table. On lui avait offert une Mercedes-Benz, uh, mais so il avait refusé de s'en servir was a very admirable, admirable person and we learned that admirable. he has been a nice person, good person all along. Et I was young at that time, but Moi, I learned that uh, jeune, uh, some like Sihanouk uh, police, que la police de um, undressed Mr. Kyo Sampan in front of the assembly. And Mr. Kyo Sampan uh, protested uh, against uh, the prince and he wrote about this in the Observateur. Il a écrit un article à ce sujet dans l'Observateur. And uh, indeed uh, we were worried that he would be arrested. Et nous craignions tous qu'il soit arrêté. The president, thank you Le very much. Merci beaucoup. Can you also describe uh, to the chamber the events or 
à présent what happened in nous parler Phnom Penh de during ce qui s'est passé à Phnom Penh when the liberated soldiers approached the city lorsque tell the timber about your impression concerning the people rouge and the general situation de la ville. briefly please pourriez-vous brièvement décrire la situation qui prévalait en général response In a few words, I may say, in 1970, when King Norodom was toppled down, I was in Kampong Cham. We heard that uh, people from Krotches and Snul had to travel all the way from these locations to revolt against uh, the government. Était allé à Kompong At that time, Cham pour se révolter contre le gouvernement. Uh, bombs in Skun à Skun, l'armée de l'Onol a largué des bombes sur les manifestants. Came to the Choi-Chang-Wa area. Ceux-ci sont allés Mr. dans la zone de Choi-Chang-Wa. Uh, the French man fired guns, of, uh, open fire at these demonstrators. It was uh, in the March, or the 30th of March, that Sosten this Fernandez event happened. It was at about six o'clock when the soldier had to open fire on the unarmed demonstrators, 60 of whom were killed in this incident. Ont la mort dans cet incident. The Khmer Rouge were cruel, Les Khmer but uh, I believe that Uh, they were cruel. cruel because they had reason to do uh, that as they were not pleased uh, with the ainsi, way they were treated uh, by the Lonel soldiers. Pas de la And façon at that time, the Vietnamese troops uh, were invading uh, the border area of Cambodia. And I myself was also arrested Moi at même, Ong Chai Mountain in Kampong Cham, but I had to bribe them for my release. Verser un pot de vin pour I had libérer. to pay them about 44,000 dong for my release. J'ai dû verser environ 44,000 dong pour être remis en liberté. I think uh, it also important to uh, recall the event that on the 1st of May 1970, American soldiers and the South Vietnamese troops invaded uh, Cambodia. They came deep inside to Cambodia, 40 kilometers deep into the country. Um, now I live in the area where it was once occupied by these uh, troops. Une qui a été it was in Ho Reang Ao district. Dans district de Ho Reang Ao. These Vietnamese uh, troops came all the way to Sayang village, uh, the village uh, which was the hometown of Deputy Prime Minister Sok King. The American and the Vietnamese troops Les were Américains very brutal. They killed civilians and raped them. Ils the only way the people could uh, be safe uh, was uh, to join the, or to reach the Khmer Rouge soldiers. I could also Uh, refer to witnesses who say uh, that the Khmer Rouge soldiers were very nice and good people. They helped us uh, cultivate uh, rice qui la and also they uh, were engaged in this assistance all along. Et It happened during the time aide. when Cambodia was bombarded by Ça, the Americans. I am talking about this Sur because I have my own version si about the Khmer Rouge. At the beginning, the Khmer, Khmer Rouge provided début, some form of hope for the people of Cambodia. Even I myself, in Moi my book, uh, Cambodia, Anne Zero, I also wrote that I would pray that the 
Khmer Rouge, soldiers came because uh, people lost all hope during the Lon Nol regime. Cambodian people had to suffer greatly and in despair. And by 1973, we already knew what the Khmer Rouge had been doing. They were helping us in the fields. They and we also learned that people were evacuated uh, in 1973 when I was in Kampung Cham. I learned that uh, this happened in Bok Khnao and Damna. Locations. But uh, the information about the bad deeds of Khmer Rouge intensified. We did not know why this happened. Perhaps it was a kind of tactic uh, uh, in war. And we were still convinced that Khmer Rouge were not bad people. When they won the war, we expected that they would uh, lessen their cruelty. But that was not our expectation. But it was better than what uh, the people had been treated by the Lono soldiers, though. On the 17th of April 1975, the whole population was evacuated from the city. It was after the victory Après la victoire, won over by the Khmer Rouge. And on the 20th and, uh, of January 19... 73, there was a signature sign uh, by the uh, Mr. Ki uh, Kissinger, and Mr. Kissinger should Henry also be brought uh, Kissinger to stand trial uh, for his acts uh, during that time. Pour, uh, uh, the Americans uh, dropped bombs all across Cambodia, and I was the witness, I bore witness to these events. I was in a house near the market uh, of Kandal or Kandal Market. At night, I could see that the bombs were dropped in the horizon. It was like the, her the skyline was burning. The American soldiers mistreated Cambodian people without any reason whatsoever. They killed Cambodian people through bombings. Some researchers said that about 100,000 Cambodian people died. To me, uh, about 400,000 people could have been killed uh, by the bombs. People were shivering. They were terrified and traumatized uh, by these carpet bombings. Par, uh, ce We all know that uh, everyone was having a very difficult time during the time La of the bombing. And people in the paddy fields had to run to the cities to take refuge. They refuge were afraid ville. of the Americans who kept bombing Americans, on, car ceci ne on de them. So by 1975, the, by April 1975, people already 75, came to the city and 
Then we were informed or asked to leave the city because they said that Americans would be bombing us again. As I told you, we have been traumatized by the bombing. So by way of hearing uh, that uh, we had to leave the city, otherwise we would be uh, bombed again, people were convinced and we had to leave the city. Les gens étaient convaincus et c'est ainsi qu'ils ont quitté la ville. I talked to the Khmer Rouge uh, that uh, I did not want to leave Cambodia. I would like to live in Cambodia until I die. But the Khmer, Khmer Rouge uh, told me that uh, I could be on my own. And uh, I, if I did not want to leave Cambodia, then I would have to be responsible si for my own safety. Je ne the president, pas le Cambodge, uh, Mr. Poncho, you already testified uh, the events you bore witness uh, to, for example, the bombings, and that you lived in Psakanda location on tall building. Can you please be more precise? How close were you to the bomb sites that you could really see them from your apartment or the place where you stay. Response. I could see the skyline which was so bright. The skyline was illuminated already by these fires, the fireball from the bombs. So the sounds of the bombs could be heard easily. So I could see that it would not be very far from Phnom Penh. That's why the bombs uh, uh, could be heard uh, when they were dropped. And also the ground were was shaking Le at some point. Tremblait. So I believe that uh, the bombs were dropped uh, Je not very far from the donc, vicinity of the city. Ne pas très loin de la ville. The President, uh, thank you, Mr. Pancho. You talked Merci, about the Pancho. increment of uh, population Vous flowing into the city before the 17th of April 1975, and you even emphasized that according to your estimation, the number of people could have reached uh, 3 million uh, by the time uh, in 1975, uh, uh, April 1975. Can you also tell the chamber where were these people from? The President, Mr. Poncho, could you please hold on? Le Wait President. a moment until you Veuillez see the red light on your mic. Animé. Otherwise, uh, you could not be heard. Response. Mr. Stalin Réponse. said uh, in the statistic uh, that about one to two million people could have come uh, to the city, but there was no other substantiated uh, report uh, to support this. But I worked uh, with the organization to help the refugees, Moi, and I could see that people kept coming to the city every day. I can't exactly say how many people could have uh, come to the city, but I can estimate uh, that there could have been two to three million people in Phnom Penh at that time because people could be seen staying at different pagodas and street corners. The President, uh, what was Le your President. impression concerning the way people lived uh, their life uh, back then? Did they have enough food to eat or did they live a decent life? Que leur de vie était Response. Réponse. Life was miserable Les conditions de vie étaient because they couldn't survive such a situation. They could not make a living in a chaotic uh, situation. My organization and Caritas organization assisted uh, the refugees and we also helped them grow some vegetables uh, on the outskirts of the city. The 
People did not have enough to eat. Les gens n'avaient pas assez à manger. First, uh, we could help them, but the assistance was uh, very minimal. We could help them minimes. until January 1975, and we also uh, saw that um, ships were seen transporting rice uh, to Brooklyn. On the 1st of January 1975, by midnight, we were bombed or fire at by all Nous from all directions and I learned pilonnés. at that time that Trumpin would Depuis soon be captured by the Khmer Rouge. Mm. Two days later, the Khmer, the Khmer Rouge soldiers crossed the Mekong River, Khmer so Rouge no more food would be shipped uh, from Vietnam donc, as uh, we saw before. The American planes uh, brought uh, rice des avions and américains food, uh, from Bangkok. Du riz et de la nourriture depuis Bangkok. As early as March 1975, Américains ont mis en place un the pont aérien. Ils utilisaient pour cela parachutes des parachutes area conquered by the Khmer Rouge uh, on several occasions. Parfois dans des périmètres contrôlés par les Khmer Rouge. On the 17th of April 1975, it was the day when Khmer Rouge all came to the Khmer city. We were very terrified because we knew already that uh, the Khmer Rouge did something very bad uh, in the right fields. But we had no choice. Dans les rizières, mais nous n'avions pas le choix. The President, uh, thank you very much, uh, Merci beaucoup. Mr. Poncho. Did you also have an opportunity to visit uh, Avez -vous some eu l'occasion de visiter des hôpitaux? If so, what was your impression si oui, concerning quelles ont été the vos medical care service concernant les soins and how patients uh, were dans ces hôpitaux treated? Et concernant les traitements response dont in lonel time i did not work Sous at Lonnol, hospitals i had different assignments and we worked in different choses. directions that je i had no opportunity to go to the hospitals i was a, an interpreter all, uh, and translator je although i knew the situation was uh, very bad. I je had to remain at home performing mauvaise, my job. Je devais rester chez moi et faire mon I helped uh, some people aidé who were seriously ill from Triangle location and we collected Triang, them and have them kept in one center so that uh, this kind of disease they um, had uh, could not be spread out to other people. So this is the only incident when I can tell you about uh, people who were sick, uh, but I did not pay great attention to work at hospitals. Ça, the hôpitaux. President, uh, thank you. We would like to proceed to event uh, from uh, 19, uh, during the April 1975, uh, now the evening before the 17th of April, where were you and what did you do? Parlons de la soirée qui a précédé le 17 avril. Où étiez-vous? Que faisiez-vous? Veuillez attendre que le micro soit allumé. Response: As I already told you this morning, I work. Uh, at a church and uh, from the 13th of April 1975 I learned uh, already back then that the Khmer Rouge soldiers would capture Phnom Penh any time soon so I stay at a commune office and there was a church, a very tall church in the area. 
Dans uh, the location quartier. was not proper for such building of the tall uh, big pas church si because I learned that uh, if a government uh, ruled Après by uh, the nationalists uh, took power, then si this church would be destroyed. But I thank the Khmer Rouge uh, who actually finally destroyed this Mais en monument fait, ce sont anyway, les rouges qui ont cette because place. it was too tall, Elle était like a mountain, haute. it was not a Nous kind of good montagne. building. But uh, I was in the building <coughs> and I could see Khmer Rouge soldiers bâtiment. marching into the city, they burned down some houses. Ils ont so des on the 16th of April, I thought that it was about time already that the Khmer Rouge came to the city. Mr. Francois Perez, uh, the head of the Red Cross, created a kind of camp site for people who would like to take refuge at uh, what Ceux qui uh, rather at the Santakir Phnom or Phnom Hotel, the Phnom Hotel, Santa Kia, soit hotel and they Phnom. wrote uh, that place uh, was the international site uh, for refugees, and it's a free soldiers zone. Une zone so à I les was réfugiés asked et to help translate. Soldats. On m'a demandé d'apporter une aide comme interprète. Into Khmer, from Khmer into French. Du Khmer vers le français. And we received uh, senior people, Nous or officers, des officials who would like to take refuge at that qui place. Qui voulaient se réfugier sur place. And uh, I had to help uh, check them before they could be allowed to get into Je the place. I had to help remove or unarm uh, them before désarmer. they could be allowed into the vicinity. I also met a group of people who created the full role, the group that was created uh, in a form of the front for liberating un front the de des races suppressed groups of people. So this uh, full row group uh, had to fight against uh, the Vietnamese and also the Khmer. And Iban was the head uh, of uh, this full row group. Du, du row, and he also Iban. took refuge at the place. And I had to take Et away his weapon and désarmer. knives. But I felt so bad after couteau. all that I had to remove these Mais items because they needed uh, uh, knives uh, for food, for cutting foods. Not clear, my baby. And at Et night, me prape, on I could hear fighting, gunfires surrounding nuit, the vicinity of Phnom Penh. Khmer Rouge opened fire, and uh, every now and then, I, when I was at the Phnom Penh commune office, I could hear this, and I had to travel from this place to Sat Mai, but by the time I came back, I saw seven people died because a bomb was dropped a moment ago, and these seven people lied dead uh, near my house. And from 1973, Onwards, uh, the situation in Phnom Penh was so miserable, was so difficult. There was no food, and Khmer Rouge continued fighting and open fire. And uh, I believe that uh, in 1972, this fierce fighting happened once already. 
صفحه خاص The Khmer Rouge uh, dropped bombs and killed Les about 200 people oh, at Tul Swai Prey location in 1973. Khmer Rouge dropped bombs again and killed all the people in that Songkat. All houses were on fire and uh, people had no food and they were terrified, they were traumatized by this war. The President. Now you talked already about the 17th of April 1975, so we would like uh, to have a few questions concerning the event uh, after 17th of April 1975. Nonetheless, uh, we are convinced that the parties to the proceeding may be asking you some questions concerning this. At this moment, the Chamber would like to know more from you about the events that happened exactly on the 17th of April 1975. In particular, what happened in Phnom Penh when you saw in 1975, on the 17th of April, please describe to the chamber only what happened during that particular day. Response on the on the night of the 16th of April, I was still at the Le Pnum Hotel to disarm uh, people, the the government mm. officials who would like to Je take refuge at the international refugee camp or site. Turan, I was at the municipality Par la suite, and I could see that hundreds of people were coming from, from all directions de personnes into the dans city la ville and they said de that the Khmer Rouge were coming and we received them, we placed them uh, in a building, a big building and we edifice. believed that uh, everyone could be saved. Uh, in that area, bombs could never reach us. Être en sécurité dans ce bâtiment et que and then there was les toucher. a sedan, a white sedan packed Il y avait before the French embassy. And we believed that the French uh, officials would be negotiating with the Khmer Rouge so that we could be we safe. Safe. We hope good thing could happen. But later on, we learned or we saw tanks rolling to the Descartes school and Shell were fired uh, Des obus from that ont été tirés. tank. Les tanks ont tiré. And a man had to walk all the way to the tank to Et negotiate uh, with the soldiers. Jusque devant les tanks pour And avec les soldats. as the result, uh, Half of the soldiers surrendered Et when, when the remaining of the rest uh, continued fighting. And this person disappeared, and the tank disappeared. disappeared. And, the tank disappeared. and I had the impression that it was strange that there were some Jews uh, who were Et wearing black clothes holding a flag. And journalists uh, could identify them as les Khmer Rouge soldiers. Actually, they were not Khmer Rouge soldiers. They were the. They were Lonol's brother and relatives. These people could 
have taken the advantage of the opportunity to claim the victory of Phnom Penh. Et essayer de profiter de l'occasion pour prendre toute cette libération de Phnom Penh. Some people on cars et to congratulate them, and also they were congratulated by the people in Phnom Penh. And all the journalists still were convinced that this group of people were the Khmer Rouge. And uh, Le Rouge. Monde also Le um, Le Monde. captured uh, this event, and they even said uh, that Khmer Rouge a liberated Phnom Penh. I think the journalists were misled by this event. And I was also surprised uh, when I was at the church. Uh, and I did not know why the fighting had been very fierce and people exchanged hostility. But now they hacked uh, one another. It is not uh, like what I expected. Et être heureux. Among Ils these uh, uh, young people who wore black clothes, Parmi ces jeunes, oui, I noirs, could see that vu. Uh, uh, they were not the people that we could smile at. Et on ne at pas 10 o'clock, they captured the whole city. Dès 10 heures, ils avaient pris le contrôle de la ville. So by then, I can see that uh, Phnom, Penh, Phnom Penh was occupied by all these soldiers. And we could also see other people who had to surrender or were disarmed. At the beginning, we saw only young people searching other for weapons. But then we learned that uh, they were the Khmer soldiers. And we learned also that the local soldiers had to surrender, and uh, the representative of the local soldiers uh, made it clear that uh, the local soldiers now were defeated and they surrendered, and they did not do any harm to the Khmer soldiers anymore. And some like who that uh, also uh, told the people at that time that. Uh, it is time now Adieu. we had to join hands in rebuilding the country and we have begged uh, the victors not to engage in any hostility further. So by 10, uh, 10 o'clock, as I Donc, told you, Phnom Penh uh, was fully captured Et and it was complete silent. There was no more gunfire. I did not believe that the Khmer Rouge stopped killing people, but I did not hear any more gunshots. And at 11 o'clock, I saw the unspeakable event. I saw the sick people. I saw the cripple who were crawling like worms right in front of my house. And people were moving out of the city. And uh, one of the handicapped uh, asked to stay in our house and I said sorry you had to move on otherwise you would be killed if you stayed here so we did not receive any patients and it was shameful for me not to do that but we had no choice and a lot of injured people had to be were 
asked to move to the paddy fields. Ont été envoyés dans les rizières. And I heard uh, people say it. If the injured uh, people did not want to leave, then they would be killed si by bombs pas quitter, by the soldiers. At about 12 o'clock, I heard uh, the Khmer Rouge expelled the Cham people. I was happy. I was happy because the Cham people was uh, uh, were allowed to leave the city so On that they could return to uh, their hometown. Make a home. At around two, I saw the Khmer Rouge a soldier in black clothes. Uh, they uh, forced us uh, to leave immediately for fear of. Uh, bombing. I do not recall whether or not they uh, made that announcement through loudspeaker or not. But as I told you earlier, the civilians were very frightened of the air bombardment by the American soldiers, so they had to leave. And then uh, they had to leave uh, by themselves. I told them not to leave, but they said they were uh, fearful of American bombardment, so they decided to leave, and I could not stop them. I said, and, well, you could leave then. I saw... I saw people walking along the street. They were marching out of the city. They walked in uh, slow motion. I saw people march along the street, uh, but the movement were very slow. They could actually uh, travel on foot around four, three to four kilometers per hour. And then at around six o'clock, I did not see any uh, people in Phnom Penh. Uh, at least in my place, I did not see uh, any civilian. I read a book uh, which cited the uh, shooting incident of the civilian somewhere around Wat Phnom, but I did not witness that by myself. Actually, the Khmer Rouge soldier was not like uh, the uh, picture depicted in the uh, Killing Field film. Because I think uh, that that film by Laurent Rosway, uh, he uh, he was not uh, depicting the uh, real picture of the Khmer Rouge at that time. It was only reflected in the film, but actually the Khmer Rouge uh, was uh, threatening us uh, indirectly. They used uh, their fierce eye to threaten the people. We, I, I and my friend met with the Khmer Rouge, and I looked into the Khmer Rouge eye, and then uh, they looked at us uh, with a strange look. Actually, the Khmer Rouge uh, could threaten us by only a bare look of eyes. They were very fierce. That was the event on the 16th of April and on Ça, the night of the 17th April. Et la nuit du 17 avril. At night, enfin, there tombée. were uh, military groups comprising of around 10 members each and it was led by a leader deputy leaders chef. and members. They came to our house. Chef, chef uh, they wanted to stay uh, over there. Uh, when they met us, uh, they gave us a very uh, fierce look. Uh, they communicated with us. They asked us whether or not I knew Mac Ellen because Mac Ellen was uh, the wife of Balan. Si so. 
and la mère d'Hélène, l'épouse uh, de Bison. Told us not to uh, move around uh, freely, and then at night uh, we talked to those Khmeru soldiers, librement. and it was not uh, that uh, difficult to uh, talk to them. They were Nous like ordinary youth rouge. as well, and the Khmeru wanted to learn how to drive our cars. And when they Uh, drew the car and then they hit the tree mm, and they blame uh, the car voiture, why uh, the car uh, did not find the way by itself. So the Khmer Rouge uh, in general was uh, dumb. They uh, were ignorant of this, uh, of anything. So we stayed uh, and played with the Khmer Rouge uh, that night, and uh, they did not appear to be you know, some bodies who were fierce. And on the 18th of April, the le team leader April, asked me, le chef de uh, and they told me uh, that uh, we had to go to the uh, train, train station. And I was uh, driving the Khmer Rouge uh, in my Donc, moi, uh, car at that time, and I was acting uh, as a tour guide. Oui, I told them that this uh, was the residence of this person and that person. Uh, this was the uh, independent monument. This mansion belongs to a uh, royal family, uh, so on and so forth. And then we uh, drove. Uh, past the royal palace. And then at that time, I still noticed that there were some remaining uh, Lonel soldiers resisting uh, as well, and they were fighting. And I told the Khmer Rouge, but they were not frightened of the Lonel soldier, and they kept asking me where the American uh, soldier were staying. And I told them, no, there was no Khmer, uh, there were no American uh, around. So the Khmer Rouge uh, thought that there were the presence of American soldiers everywhere. So we went along Kromun so Road, and we uh, noticed that there were uh, uh, Lonol soldiers who were fighting with uh, the Khmer Rouge, and uh, the Khmer Rouge soldiers were a bit uh, frightened. And they asked us to uh, drive them around Phnom Penh to show them around. The reason why I am describing all of this event is because to uh, make the court uh, clear that on the 17th of April, the Khmer Rouge evacuated the city, at least in the Songkat Chen. Uh, I drove from a uh, train Dans station, I, I drove them through the uh, independent monument, Donc, and then I go through voiture, uh, uh, all the way through the Royal Palace and Kramun Saw Street, and I did not see uh, any civilians, and the uh, Khmeru soldier uh, broke the door of the houses opened, and oh. then they took all the uh, properties uh, from from the houses. And then we went all the way to the French embassy in Phnom Penh. The president, thank you. Just now, uh, you talk about the order of the Khmer Rouge, and you say you did not recall whether or not the Khmer Rouge used loudspeaker uh, to announce to the public uh, to evacuate uh, the city. That's what uh, you testified uh, earlier on. The uh, no, my question is, uh, is that, do you still recall the words uh, the Khmer Rouge used to announce to the civilian in Phnom Penh uh, to leave the city? What were the actual wordings that they used, either through uh, loudspeaker or orally? Response. They said, Comrade, uh, leave uh, Phnom Penh city as soon as you can, uh, because the American uh, soldiers will bombard the city. You will leave the city for about three or four days. You did not have to bring anything along with you. Uh, you only leave for a short period of time. You will come back. Uh, the Khmeru soldiers are not theft. Uh, your properties will not be stolen. So uh, just uh, leave, uh, uh, leave the city as soon as you can. So that's what uh, I still it still echoes in my in my mind uh, the words that the Khmeru used at that time.
Voilà en gros ce qu'ils ont dit. Président. Et c'est ce, ce dont je me souviens. Uh, were only was only one person uh, made that announcement or they uh, actually uh, designated different groups in order to make such announcement uh, to evacuate people de, of the, out of the city uh, did they make that announcement uh, everywhere in the city in order to evacuate the people or only one uh, group of person to uh, to make such an announcement response at that times uh, one thing came to my mind because I saw Khmer Rouge soldiers in black clothes, and they asked people to leave, and they asked us to leave as well. And then I said, I did not want to go. I want to die in Cambodian territory. And then I saw another group of uh, Khmer Rouge soldiers. They were in green uh, clothes. And there were another group of Khmer Rouge as well. And I uh, thought to my mind that uh, the Khmer Rouge was Anarchic. Uh, they uh, en fait they were not in organized uh, groups. I saw uh, some of them were wearing uh, black clothes, some were in green, noir, dark green clothes, and uh, some were carrying different, you know, rifles. And I noticed that uh, there. There were uh, six uh, different groups of soldiers en fait, gathering for a meeting somewhere around the uh, railway station and then I, uh, it raises uh, some question uh, to my mind and at that time I think uh, that the announcement was made through loudspeaker but I do not recall that event. The President. What was your impression uh, when the uh, Phnom Penh dwellers were ev being evacuated by the Khmer Rouge uh, through the announcement you said, and the Khmer Rouge who said uh, that people had to leave the city for a short period of time, say for three or four days, for fears of the bombing by the American soldiers. Uh, what was your uh, observation uh, at that time? Uh, did they uh, leave uh, the city with specific purpose in mind, or? Did they have any specific uh, direction to go, or it was under the um, uh, command of the Khmer Rouge uh, to leave into whatever direction they wanted the civilians to go? Mr. Pangshou, please, uh, please uh, pause a bit uh, when in between questions. Uh, when you see the red light on your microphone, then you can start uh, speaking. Otherwise, uh, your testimony will not go through. Well, those who stay in the northern part of the city, they had to leave uh, from the northern part. So they had to leave through uh, different direction according to uh, their areas of residence. Now. For example, uh, one young boy, he was about 12 years of age, he was crying. Uh, he told me that uh, my, wife, my, my mother was delivering another baby in the east. He wanted to go to see his mother. No, but actually he could not uh, go because we had to, we had to go uh, in accordance with the orders of the Khmer Rouge. And people were actually were very sad and uh, they were very depressed as well. We look at their facial expression, they were sadder than sad. And uh, they did not want uh, to leave because they uh, noticed that the way the Khmer Rouge um, uh, actually uh, exerted pressure on us, not only through weapons, but also through the uh, eyes as well. They only stare at us, and then we would be frightened you know, to listen to their order. The president. Now, you describe only a few words that the Khmer Rouge uh, used, and you also said uh, that they only stared at the civilians, and then they are, they are frightened stare, frightening stare uh, at the people uh, were enough to move the people out of the city, or uh, there was any actual order or physical uh, coercion, for example, against the people uh, so that they move in accordance with their Direction. Response. To my recollection, the Khmer Rouge did not. Uh, 
use uh, physical coercion in order to move people out, at least uh, in my areas that I could witness. Uh, we could not uh, travel around at that time even to the uh, central market, but in the quarter that I stayed, I did not see the Khmer Rouge exercising uh, physical coercion against the people. They only ordered people to leave and then people uh, had to leave. I think that they uh, exercised certain psychological uh, pressure uh, to the people. I think that uh, Phnom Penh people were uh, used to the uh, bombing uh, prior to the 16th of April. That's why uh, they found that the information was uh, rather true because the 17th was considered a peace uh, day uh, that uh, pe Phnom Penh dwellers uh, knew that the Khmer Rouge were not that bad and they would not actually kill their own people and they thought that probably there would no longer be any bombing. They followed the order of the uh, Khmer Rouge. They were sad, but uh, they had to leave at that time. I did not see the killing. I did not see the physical coercion. I, I don't say that there would not be any killing at that time, but I just did not see uh, witness the killing myself. The president, you said you did not witness the killing, but you said also that you had to walk along with the Khmer Rouge soldiers all the way to independent monument and to Kramunso Road and to the railway station, and you were also warned by the Khmer Rouge soldiers. Can you tell the chamber, please, did you witness any mistreatment by the Khmer Rouge soldiers toward uh, the civilians? And did you also see any dead body lying on the roads? I did not see the corpses, réponse. Je n'ai pas vu de cadavres. But I saw the people who were walking on the road know that bodies, although the war was not yet over. Regarding your question, how people were treated, uh, I can say that uh, the way people were treated uh, was uh, bad, was beyond imagination, because it was a brutal act uh, by the Khmer Rouge towards uh, the people the evacuees. I had to leave the uh, French embassy on two occasions. A few days later, perhaps on the 23rd, or 21st or 22nd of April, I had to uh, leave uh, the French embassy so that I could monitor the actual situation. And I saw the Khmer Rouge uh, occupied uh, the municipality, and I could not see other people other than the Khmer Rouge soldiers. And later on, I met a Khmer Rouge female soldier, une soldate, Khmer Rouge. I was uh, very frightened because women effrayé. soldiers of the Khmer Rouge were believed to Car be even more cruel Khmer than the male counterparts. Que les garçons. Khmer Rouge. The Khmer Rouge then evacuate or gathered uh, the French citizens and those français. who were holding French passports Et tous ceux qui en possession de passeports français. At, in the vicinity of Phnom Penh it was empty but I saw hundreds of people Autour gathered Penh, at Prague but I never saw any dead bodies. I couldn't say that people did not die during the course of evacuation, but I just didn't see any. The President, thank you, Mr. Witness.
It is now appropriate Le moment est venu for adjournment. The chamber will adjourn for 15 minutes. L'audience reprendra dans 15 minutes. Court officer is now Monsieur instructed to assist uh, Mr. Pancho during the adjournment and have him returned pause, to uh, the courtroom by 10 to 11. Pour 11h moins 10. Suspension de l'audience.